Aloha, it's Katie, and today I'm doing the highly requested How I Got a 45 from I Be It's still crazy to say it. If you didn't see my live reaction, you should check it out. It was very shocking. Comments were so overwhelming in the comments. A lot of love, a lot of requests to do this video because you're in IB in high school, you know, struggling, figuring out how to study. I've been there. So today I'm going to share you my best tips to help you hopefully succeed and get that 45 you want or just to be the best version of yourself. First, I'll talk about my top five tips about mindset and attitude and just how to motivate yourself during IB because it can be very difficult. It's super important and if there's anything you take away, I think these are the key five habits. After that, I'll talk more about the technical aspects and share 10 technical study tips that I highly recommend for IB, especially if you also did extracurriculars, sports, and had to manage other things like me in high school. But first, if you're new to my channel, we welcome you to join our Alohana, which is what we call our family of subscribers. You should subscribe down below and click the bell to turn my notifications on while you're at it. I upload new videos every week. I will do more IB in college and high school videos, so stay tuned for that. And if you do both, I give free shout outs like these wonderful people on screen. Just don't forget to comment aloha and leave a comment. Don't be a silent viewer. I love reading your comments and replying to them, especially if you have any questions. Here is how I think I got a 45 in IB. Before I entered IB, I was very different. I would not pay attention in class. I was busy time with my friends. I didn't get good grades. I just wasn't motivated. And because I went through that, I think I can safely say that the difference is my motivation. You need to figure out yourself what motivates you. If you're in for something short term, like just to pass IB, get a diploma, reach the conditional your school has out for you, or if you're thinking more long term and that you want to do the IB because you know it's a challenging program, you know that it will be hard and it will have a lot of workload, but that you will come out of it stronger. For me, my motivation was the latter. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts to talk about what motivates people. There is a carrot and stick method where you kind of just chase after the next achievement, next title, and then there's a different one that focuses more on yourself. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So it's something more fulfilling and in it when you see yourself grow in something, you improve, and that helps your confidence. That is the mindset that I had when I did IB. Before, when I didn't really care about school, I was chasing after grades. I had a good score in this test. It didn't really matter if I really knew what I was learning. Whereas in IB, I really focused on the learning. I prioritized the learning. I did not have the 45 or the valedictorian in mind. Those things were just not within my like, I just didn't imagine, I just couldn't see that future for me. I just wanted to do my best. And that leads me to the second tip, just do your best. I know it sounds so cliche when people say it. People told it to me before I was like, okay, it didn't really resonate with me, honestly. But when I really started living by it these past two years and I saw results, it was just so motivating. There's nothing more empowering than seeing yourself improve, than seeing you come back from failures, not having regrets because when you don't do well on a test or something, normally you dwell over it. For me, when you try your best, you do not have that worry because you know you give it your best shot. You can look ahead, focus on the future and how you're gonna improve from that and bounce back instead of thinking about what went wrong. Of course, it's great to analyze so that you can avoid that mistake in the future, but it really changed my attitude because I was content with myself. I wasn't beating myself up for doing bad on a test. When you really do your best, you can't ask for anything else. And I think it's the beautiful thing about it. Never put your worth in grades. I also know how that feels. It does not feel good. It is very hard for your self-esteem and it's a very shaky foundation to base your worth on a standard that might not even accurately represent how smart you are. If everyone thought that the F sign on their test represented who they were, like nobody would ever be able to get up from that. It's really going to be a huge setback and mental block. If anything, I love the just do your best attitude because that way when you fail, you don't look at it as a failure at all. You look at it as a lesson. You look at it as something you can improve on. So I've gone twos and threes before on tests. Yes, it was, it was like, whoa, it was more of a wake up call for me that these were my weaknesses and these are where I had to improve on it. The good thing is when you discover that before the exam time, you have time to adequately prepare for the things you fail at. Because honestly, all it means is that you probably just didn't study for that. If you did, you probably just weren't studying the right way or it was just unfortunate that the questions were so hard, but you just have to put in a little bit more work and you can get there eventually. So having that growth mindset throughout is something just so positive for yourself. It will keep you going and eventually really manifest itself in your whole life and not just academics. I know I sound a bit preachy, but I just really hope I convey that attitude to you guys because it was not always my attitude. 
and I really think it was what changed me from an average student to a more academically strong student. Number three, if you want to get a 45, if that truly is your goal, remember it is not about perfection. And I know it sounds paradoxical, but it's a 45 is a perfect score, but there is a lot of allowance and leeway in each of your subjects to get a seven. There is not much of a distinction between an 82 and a 100. If those, both of those scores are within the seven boundary, it's a seven. If you really wanted to be strategic about it, you would focus on trying to just scrape that 80 or whatever to get a seven. Now that wasn't my approach. My approach was really to learn everything because I just wanted to know everything. Curves can be in your favor. You don't need to know everything. Fourth thing, super underrated, health-wise, take care of yourself. Sleep enough, exercise, eat right. No one expects you to be in bed by 10 o'clock realistically, but try to sleep as early as you can. If you sleep enough, you'll be so much more focused going to school and you won't have to spend that extra time trying to catch up in class because you were so sleepy and you didn't process a single thing your teacher said. It just becomes a vicious cycle where you always feel groggy and your head is strained and it's not pleasant. I'm speaking from experience. If you are going to sleep late at least, master your sleeping patterns. I was very obsessed with my REM cycle and trying to figure out the optimal time to wake up so that it would not disrupt my deep sleep. Just Google REM cycle, look at the diagrams, and try to figure out after how many hours you will be in your deep sleep. You want to avoid waking up during those times and choosing a time when you're not in deep sleep to wake up. It really does help. I've noticed some days when I followed it, I wake up and I don't feel as horrible. Of course, I don't still feel as great without having a good night's rest, but if you're not going to sleep, be smart about it. If I know I have to wake up in seven and a half hours, but that's during my deep sleep, I will just settle for getting seven hours of sleep. Figure this out for yourself. Know your own body. And number five, don't fall into the IB stress vortex. I call it that because it's so easy to get swept up around all your classmates who are probably talking about how they're going to die or how they're going to fail and they're not going to get enough sleep. It's okay if it's lighthearted, you know, to lift your spirits up. I get that. But just don't get consumed by it to the point that you actually believe it and you start viewing IB as this monstrous thing you just can't beat because once you view IB as enemy, it's not going to set yourself up for success. One trick I talked about before is to think about how small IB is in the spectrum of your life. Make IB look like just a small speck in your life. It just seems like something you can totally do. Those were all my mental tricks, which I really hope you consider because they are what guide you. It only goes so far if you're not really motivated. Now I'm gonna talk about technical study tips that really helped me study the most efficiently as I could. Study smarter, not necessarily harder because I was also managing a lot of different things in school. When I studied, I had to really get myself done. So if you want to succeed in IB, it's about knowing what IB expects you to know and how you are going to convey that clearly through the formats and assessments that they have set out. Before you take your exam, you have to be a master of these. The first tip is to use official IB resources. There are so many textbooks, study guides, and past papers available online. Come exam time, you'll want to do a lot of time practice with past papers, analyzing the questions, the mark schemes. You will have the mindset of an examiner by the time you go into that. I think these resources and past papers especially are the best indicator for what you can expect when you take your exams. You need to go through the syllabus of all of your subjects. I know that sounds so laborious and trust me when <laughs> I thought of it too I was like but it is actually a very good reviewing technique because you can use it as a checklist and see if you can tick all your learning outcomes and make sure you're fully prepared to take the exam. These tiny details are seriously what are going to bite you and make you wish you had spent just five more minutes reviewing this because then you would have been able to get this two-point question. This two-point question can be the difference between a pass or a fail, six or a seven. You really can't just think, nah, the IB is not going to test that because Yes, somehow they will. If it's on their syllabus, they are going to test if you know that. Why else would they put it in the syllabus, you know? You don't want to waste your lost marks on these things that you could have studied for. You want to allocate that allowance for lost points on variable factors like on the day jitters or unreasonably hard questions. Not something you didn't study for. If you want it bad enough, be diligent. Go through all of those learning outcomes. Just look up your course syllabus online. It's not that bad. I went through it. Number three, teachers are your best friends. Upperclassmen are your mentors. Ask them for advice because they just went through the same process. They can offer you insights, especially ones that are unique to your school or your circumstances. You know, I can only speak about the general IB gist, but I'm sure if you ask someone in your school, they will have a better idea of which teachers are good, what resources work for you. You know, they understand that more. And if these aren't easily 
accessible to you, you always have the internet. One of my best 24 seven friends. But assuming your teacher knows what they're doing, they are a great resource. Big part of my academic success in the IB is because of my teachers. Don't be afraid to ask them questions. They have the expertise. It might sound like a dumb question now. I've asked plenty of them. It is much more worth it to make this mistake now than to make it on the actual exam. You don't want to regret it if you see it comes up. Also, account for all hypothetical questions. Explore the full spectrum of possibilities of questions. Though sometimes it may go beyond the scope of your syllabus, sometimes just knowing it makes you feel more confident and that morale boost can be really helpful for you. Number four, handwriting your notes after you handwrite them you can type them up then you can condense them again but rewrite it after there are just so many studies that talk about how handwriting your notes will help you retain that information better also if you review the content within 24 hours that will also help your memory of it if you guys want I can do a video on all my study techniques how I studied specifically for IB exams you know my exam schedule just give this video a thumbs up and comment if you'd like to see that next work with your friends and support one another nothing is worse than cutthroat culture where you feel like everyone is just out to get you you know learning is supposed to be a stimulating and positive environment where you know come together share your knowledge and I know that sounds so idealistic but wouldn't that be lovely when classmates have a question answer them help them even good review to you because it really tests if you understand it well enough to teach it to someone else one day you might be asking them questions and wouldn't you want them to reciprocate next pay attention in class use your class time wisely you are paying the school to learn in this time not to sleep not to talk to your friends and I know I sound like such a killjoy but I have I've done it I'm a victim I have done that before in class but let me tell you when I stopped doing that whoa did that free up more time for me to make YouTube videos after school this leads to don't fall behind in classes make sure you thoroughly understand each unit before you move on to the next because that way when you come back during mocks or exam time and you have to review that concept you already have it in some part of your brain and all you're doing is trying to cement that knowledge not trying to fill in the little gaps that you didn't learn earlier you know it just makes everything more chaotic like I mentioned earlier master each format if it's not multiple choice you need to develop a game plan that you are going to do when you go into that exam room at least have an idea of how you're going to approach the papers what you're going to write about what you're going to talk about for example for my Chinese paper too there are always the same five topics for writing it's just different prompts so I knew that I I wanted to focus on technology or culture and I already made mind maps made sure I knew words phrases and idioms relating to that so I could bust them out when it came and you know it all worked out because a good prompt came for those questions for language and literature paper one I knew that the devices I was going to use or the way I was going to or organize my paragraphs was imagery figurative language and persuasive techniques something like that you know I knew what I was going to be looking for as I analyzed the text we were given so just as you would examine your syllabus examine your rubrics and see what examiner are looking for for EEs, TOKs, essays, bulkier, bigger projects. Look for exemplars online. Try to see what qualities it has that makes it a successful piece of work. Don't copy it. Don't steal it. Don't plagiarize. Don't do any of that. You are going to sabotage yourself and it's just not worth it because you're not really learning anything yourself. Those were all my technical tips. I've also gotten some requests about doing tips for specific subjects. This video is already long enough so I'm not going to go into that now. I took high level computer science, economics, and language and literature and I took standard level math, Chinese, and chemistry. Miraculously, I did get all sevens for those subjects so I'd be happy to share any advice you want you can expect that video i really hope this video helps give this video a thumbs up subscribe down below to my channel here my blog channel here at college vlogs and exciting things are coming up click the top right eye to watch more of my videos follow me on social media at aloha kitty x scan my snapchat on your right best of luck with ib in the new school year i'm cheering for you so thank you so much for watching i love you see you next week with another new video bye guys